Oh, that's so cool. I love seeing all those little gardens springing up around the Miller development. Thanks for sharing your garden with us. Right now, we're going to be turning our attention to cold hardy plants that are also drought tolerant, a great combination for us here in central Texas. Joining us to talk about this is Justin Kosolka from uh, Big Red Sun, and it's a pleasure to have you on the program. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, Big Red Sun, we're proud to say, uh, not just a great design firm, but it's reopening its retail presence in East Austin, and that's something to celebrate. That's on East Cesar Chavez, right? Yeah, 1311 East Cesar Chavez. We're at the corner of Cesar Chavez and Navasota. All right. Uh, big white building there and we got yeah. big red sun painted on the side of it real big so yeah well yeah. and it's a, a it's going to be a delight to have a retail presence back open for us here in austin and of course uh we're just talking about this justin but uh, big red sun has become almost an emblematic uh design firm here in austin yeah. has really helped create kind of i think an austin gardening aesthetic and so I'm thrilled to have you on the program. This is a great topic, right? I mean, this is what it everybody is. wants. <laughs> yeah, with all the water restrictions, this is real important to mm -hmm. be cognizant of this when we're thinking about our plant selection. And mm -hmm. Well, you know, everybody wants drought tolerant. And they're moving towards things like agaves and yuccas and a lot of other things, looking to the west, basically, for plant material. Mm -hmm. But one thing they, people really need to be cognizant of is not all of those agaves, not all these other plants are going to be cold hardy. Exactly. There's some great varieties that do mm -hmm. well here, and then there's some other ones that are a little marginal mm -hmm. uh, that you might want to stay away from. Um, mm -hmm. One of my favorites that I've been using a lot has been the agave Weberi. Yeah. I love the color of it. It's this nice blue-gray. It has mm -hmm. this smooth, wavy leaf to it, and right. it comes to this black tip at the top. Right. Uh, it's just a nice, striking, structural plant, but it will survive temperatures down well below freezing, around like 12 degrees mm -hmm. Fahrenheit or lower, and mm -hmm. then of course, the the heat isn't a problem for it. Right. Um, well, this is, you brought a specimen along with you, and uh, th th it's a gorgeous one. Uh, mm -hmm. And and this is one of my favorite of the agaves. Mm -hmm. And this is a plant that gets really impressively large in the landscape too. And and uh, this is one of those. I, I think of this as a big red sun plant mm -hmm. because of how mm -hmm. sculptural it is. And I think that's that's something that you use plants often for their sculptural qualities. I like the, the shape and structure that it adds into the landscape mm -hmm. and then uh, the color that it brings into the palette. Mm -hmm. It's a soft color, but it mm -hmm. just goes well with a lot of the feeling right. that we like to convey. Yeah, well, it, it, it's, I think, a gorgeous gorgeous specimen. And that's, again, agave weberi. Weberi. And uh, nice to know that it gets down to 12. And another one that you like to use is the perii. And this is a Texas native. And I think it gets it can take even more cold. It can get very cold. This one and yeah. I like this one because it's so versatile. We've planted it in masses. There's a great garden we've been working on mm -hmm. with the client for many years, and um, we have probably 65 of them all planted near each other, and they've all started to pup, and it's just turning into this great mass right. with you know a few different layers of plants behind it. But it mm -hmm. makes a really great border. They stay small, so if you have a smaller space, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about it uh, taking over the yard or. You know, getting aggressive against a sidewalk and it's mm. even small if it does great in containers so right. if you have a patio or you have just an apartment balcony and you want to have some plant out there that mm. is going to take the heat and take the sun um, it'll do well in containers i've had great luck with it again it's a agave perii and perii. it comes in a couple of different forms there's mm -hmm. a one called truncata that's even more dwarfed mm -hmm. the very small and uh, that, I think, may be my favorite garden plant, period, for Austin. Yeah, it has a great little shape to the leaf, and the color of it, that nice blue-gray is really nice, yeah. and the black tip on it just kind of pops off of it, and it's yeah. just a great plant. Yeah, well, agave perii is high on my list. Um, and some other, you know, again, thinking of west, mm -hmm. um, ocotillo is one plant that, you know, we, we, you know, if you ever go to Big Ben, you see it all the time. You mm -hmm. don't think of it as a garden plant, but increasingly used now, right? It is. It's another plant that adds a lot of structure into mm -hmm. a planting scheme or a garden. It gets very tall. It can mm -hmm. get well over 10, 15 feet tall, and it has mm -hmm. these great spikes on the edges of the stems that come up from it. Mm -hmm. uh, when it rains, it'll flush with little green leaves all over, and then the bloom time, it has these bright, bright orange flowers mm. on the top of it. It's yeah. just really lovely. Yeah, when it rains. That's when it <laughs> rains. It will, once in a while. But this will last until it does rain, which is great. Uh, right, right. Uh, 
Well, these are all terrific uh, specimens. Uh, you know, there are lots of things uh, that grow close in as well uh, to Austin that we should be looking at. And I think of uh, the yuccas, for example, again, providing some of the same sculptural qualities that we expect mm -hmm. from like the agaves. Um, uh, often though, and, and uh, with trunks on them, uh, and one of them is the Thompson's yucca, which uh, mm -hmm. I know that uh, you you enjoy using as well. That one's great. It's real slow growing, but it's very rewarding when you get one of those that trunks up and that's you know, towering up as mm -hmm. tall as you are, and it has this great sculptural head over the top of the leaves that come mm -hmm. out. Um, great blue gray color and then the trunk you can either trim the dead leaves off or you can just leave it natural and let those dead leaves hang down as it mm -hmm. grows up um, it's really nice and it can add some height into your garden right right and it, you know all the plants that we're ta we've talked about thus far can be counterpointed with green plants too and we'll mm -hmm. be talking about a few of those that you like to use but what, there's one other form of agave or, or one, excuse me yucca that I want to make sure that we talk about because to, in many ways, I think this is an emblematic plant for like Western Travis County, and that's the twist leaf yucca. I yeah. mean, you see it everywhere on the edges of the escarpment here. And I, I, I love this plant, and I especially love it. There's a form that's been crossed with pallida, yucca pallida, mm -hmm. and it's got this, got the blue-green coloration yeah. in mm -hmm. a yucca, but with the twist with leaf. With the twisted leaf, and it yeah. has that little bit of color on the edge of it, and they're just mm -hmm. really great. They don't get too big. The leaves aren't too sharp. A lot of people worry about whether they're going right. to poke their you know, arm or anything with mm -hmm. it. But um, Yeah, relatively soft leaf. Relatively soft, but still remains a little bit of structure to it when you put it in. Mm -hmm. um, planted in mass, it can be really beautiful, especially mm -hmm. when they all bloom together. Right. Um, send up those old bloom spikes. It's really stunning. Well, I want to talk about some counterpoint plants. Um, uh, no, we again. You brought another plant with you that uh, I, I just. It's become commonly used now in mm -hmm. Austin. It's a, I would say it's a beloved plant in Austin. That's it the is. silver pony foot, and uh, you know, talk about a cool uh, you know setting for a lot of plants. This this one really provides it. I've had a lot of luck with the range that that plant can provide, as mm -hmm. far as that it can tolerate some dampness, but then. I've been able to plant it in gardens alongside yuccas and agaves, mm -hmm. and it can still live and thrive with the same right. amount of water that's provided to those plants. So mm -hmm. very versatile, looks great in containers, spilling over the edges of things, mm -hmm. gives you this beautiful curtain effect. Right. Um, it catches the light. Um, it even looks good at night when the moon's out. Oh yeah, because you know, it just uh, 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 lights This up. is a plant that will reflect moonlight for sure. And silver pony foot. Uh, it's a, a relative of dichondra, which is the yeah. uh, common dollar the weed, dollar which weed. I actually like yeah. as well. It's a great form. ground cover. It's yeah, a great it's, ground cover. Um, <laughs> right. But one more thing that you brought with you, and this is just so cool, I have to share it. This is an Echeveria, right? Yes. And uh, this one's called Topsy Turvy. Yeah, that has this funny little leaf shape that kind of curves in and out there, and so they call it a Topsy Turvy. But, right. Um, very cold hardy. Yeah, this, this is the thing surprising. I can't believe about this. It is. It's like cold hardy Echeveria. Yes. Um, okay. This is pretty much the only one that I've found that can survive mm -hmm. uh, the winter here. The rest of them all just melt. But this one, um, I don't know how it does it, but as long as you don't water it you know, before it freezes, if as long as it stays dry during mm -hmm. the winter time, uh, then it does great. Right. Well, it's, I'm, I'm sure people will love adding this to their rock gardens or our settings with the other things we've talked about. And of course, there are other green plants like mountain laurel, but we did, we've run out of time. We can't talk about some of those. But I know people will enjoy coming out and visiting with you at the nursery now. And I want to real quickly tell people the address one more time. The address is 1311 East Cesar Chavez at okay. the corner of C East Cesar Chavez and Navasota. Okay, and about two blocks from the former location. Yes, just a little bit further down from I-35, but not much. Okay, well, I know people will be beating a path to Big Red Sun. We thank you for being our guest on the program right. today. Thanks for having me. Best wishes it. to you, and thanks for uh, the work that you do. Thank you. Coming up next, it's our friend Daphne.